Hey, this is Wendy, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm right now here in Seville, Spain, and uh, where I am right now, check this out, I am in Plaza de España, and it is very nice in the evening when it is much cooler and you don't get throngs of crowd. So to be here at night, it's almost midnight, and it's still very hot here in Spain, especially in the summer. So to be out here to take a paseo, a stroll, is just so delightful. But today's topic, I want to talk about being an independent female traveler. For me, I cannot think of something that is more delightful, more joyful, and more blissful, and more fascinating than travel. I would think that for many people who are interested in traveling, uh, to be able to travel, that's the apex in life. People work, once they retire, what do they do? They travel. When you've got time or holiday, what do you do? You travel. So traveling is discovery, okay? Um, and I've been very fortunate to be traveling pretty much my whole lifetime. I think the first time when I boarded a plane, I was probably one year old, and I've gone through many passports, so yeah. Traveling is just something that is within my DNA and uh, as of this taping I've already been to probably 80 countries and many of the 80 countries are a lot of repetition So like for example right now I'm in Spain. It's my fourth time. So anyway, um, I want to talk about an independent female traveler when I am overseas regardless of where I am I constantly get the remark that I'm very brave either by uh, other travelers or locals and as much as I'm very appreciative of this comment because it is a very positive and generous thing to say uh, at the same time I'm a bit amused in a, in, in, in a, in a you know uh, non-judgmental way because I cannot think of anything that is easier than traveling by yourself when you travel by yourself you are not bound by other people's preference or a version pretty much you could do whatever the heck you want right you are not constrained by other people's budget their interest their physical ability um, their 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 mood I mean you name it you are pretty much by yourself and you are the king of the world you decide what you want so given that um, for me the best thing in the world is to travel alone and also uh, probably the most important it is when you are alone you have more opportunities to get into either shenanigans or more adventures because sometimes I feel that when you are traveling with others there's a tendency that you and your travel mate family friends whatever stick together and you guys are just kind of always together doing the whatever you guys are doing whereas if you're alone you really are not on anybody's time schedule you could do whatever you want and you could get into these amazing situations where you meet interesting people, interesting situations, interesting everything. It's not to say that when you're traveling with others, you cannot, but I highly believe as a solo person, there's more opportunities that come your way, okay? Because there's really no restriction, okay? So when you're with others, there may be restriction because again, it also depends if your travel mate is uh, agreeable to whatever that situation you guys can get into. So anyway, that being said, uh, let's talk about how I keep safe. First of all, there is no secret, okay? I believe at the end of the day, it is a mindset. It's a mindset of how one think. From my experience, and of course, everybody's viewpoint and uh, perspective and opinion and what have you, it are all based on their experience. From my 50, yes, I'm 50 years old, from my 50 years of experience as a traveler, I have to say that at the end of the day, human being, people, mankind are inherently good. All right, of course, you have bad people, people that try to take advantage of you, try to con you, they're evil, whatever. Uh, you have that back home wherever you are in the world. So this is uh, something that, um, you know, I mean, that's just, that's just living. There's good people and there's bad people, but in general, I believe the majority of human beings are inherently good. They have morals, they are helpful, they are hospitable, 
And I think as a single female traveler, if you ask for help, I have never encountered anybody who was not willing to help me. All right, so let's talk about the whole mindset thing. No fear, all right, because I think if you operate from fear, right there and then, uh, your energy and your vibe and your whole essence in general is going to generate, uh, it's going to be in a way that is not going to be very conducive for you to have, uh, you know, the kind of traveling that you want. So people are inherently good. And that being said, if that is the situation, if that is true, technically then you're already surrounded by positivity. All right, so that's key number one. People, I believe, are inherently good, regardless of where in the world. And I want to digress. I travel to lots of uh, countries that are developing countries, okay, third world, uh, where it is definitely poverty laden. However, I have to say it is in these places where uh, people in the West may deem dangerous or uncomfortable or, you know, not safe. From my experience, they're the best. The people are the best. They're the most helpful. They're actually, I believe, more kind and more warm than, honestly, people back in the West. Back in, the, back in more civilized, quote unquote, places. Um, I may, you know, I may have a lot of people disagree with me, but I'm just saying I think that in places that are still maybe developing, kind of village level, people tend to be more pure. They tend to be more simple. Uh, they tend to be more familial. They tend to be more just and innocence, okay, without much agenda or complication. And I think that just makes people so much easier. Oh, and the most important thing, lack of ego, okay, no ego. Because I think the problem that we have with people are basically all ego-based, okay, but I'm not gonna get into the whole Dr. Phil spiel, but let's just talk about just in general, uh, people are inherently good and helpful, especially, honestly, especially in quote-unquote poor countries. Okay, this is why I love traveling to these places. It's not so much for the people, but because those places are fascinating, all right? So that's why I go to those places. So second thing is, um, speaking about people, is the respect for the culture. When I travel, let's say some place like India, where it's still a very, very conservative, traditional country, all right? And there are some places in the world where um, maybe sexuality is still a bit repressed, okay? They are not as open, and um, sometimes there may not be a lot of females outside. That being said, it would behoove travelers, all right, to exercise common sense and dress appropriately, okay? That is so easy to do. Sometimes I see Western women Okay, Western, not necessarily Caucasian, but let's just say you come from a, um, a Western country, regardless of your ethnicity, wearing clothes that are just really un inappropriate for that kind of place, all right? You know, in the news, we already, you know, we always hear about sexual assault to women, to travelers, this kind of a thing. And it's not to say that if you dress skimpy, you deserve it or you're asking for it. Absolutely not. I do not subscribe to this thinking. But at the same time, I think there is a responsibility in a way that you just exercise common sense, all right? If you are in certain countries that are maybe more religious, more conservative, I don't think it's that difficult to dress apart, okay? Put on a long shirt, put on a long pants, what's the big deal, okay? It's not a big deal. I pretty much dress uh, I wouldn't say I, I always dress, you know, I, I, I dress uh, like them, meaning their traditional clothing, but example like India, you know, it is not difficult at all to wear something that is a bit more covered, okay? So I think basically that's going to go into the category of respecting the culture you are at another you are at we are guests we are at their hosts they are hosting us let's just say so i think that least that one can do is just respect that all right number three as a woman okay it is very important to have some boundaries you want to be 
a nice, kind, okay, and respectful, but also at the end of the day, have some kind of a boundary where there is a firmness and if necessary, yeah, a slight edge, okay? If you have to be a bit of a biatch, yeah, man, you gotta be a biatch. If that means uh, to be taken serious, okay, or not to be taken advantage of. So it's basically finding that fine line of being nice, kind, respectful, you know, charming and warm and what have you. But at the same time, you have your boundary, okay? And uh, which I'm gonna segue into three point, right? Point number three is to be very thick skinned, all right? I can't stress the importance of the value of being thick skinned. If you are thick skinned, basically you have no fear, you have no discomfort, or at least less discomfort, or at least you don't mind, to do the things that you need to do to be efficient, okay? That would mean asking anybody for anything. Thick skin means being bold and not embarrassed or afraid to ask for something, okay? This something could be anything, all right? Aside from asking for something, thick skin also means sometimes you need to defend yourself. You need to stand up for something. So what that means is you need to speak up and verbalize. Okay, thick skin also means being not shy and being open and friendly to integrate with the locals. Because I believe when you travel, sure, you could go to see, you know, some tourist attraction and then go back to your hotel and call it a day. But to me, traveling is also understanding the local culture, integrating with the people. So to integrate or to talk to the locals, uh, even if you don't know the language, assuming they speak English or you speak something else that they speak, is to talk to strangers, all right? So basically, thick skin means putting yourself out there. It means getting outside of the comfort uh, box or outside the comfort zone. That is so important because if you are thick skin, pretty much you can do anything, okay? Or at least, your mind thinks you can do anything and everything all starts with the mind. So thick skin is something I think is a fantastic uh, attribute and I believe it is something you can definitely build. It's kind of like a skill. The more you are uncomfortable, the more comfortable you get. So when you're traveling alone as a woman for such a long time, it is not the time to be shy or fearful or afraid. You basically gotta just suck it up, grab your balls, and just do what you gotta do, all right? So that's um, another thing. How to stay safe? Well, I sometimes I carry it, but I never use it because it's always stuck in my luggage. I was, uh, I have a pepper spray, and I have one of those uh, military whistle that is super loud. I have it, but honestly, it never gets taken out of my suitcase because I never need it. I don't think about it and I have never been in a situation where I am even scared right now I've been talking out here for a while it's already past midnight um, pretty much there's not much people around how do I feel I feel muy fantastico because again I'm a night owl and I love the night which segue into something else um depending on where i am traveling especially in europe okay and i did say this in a different video europe is it's civilized okay it's developed all right um to stroll at night and look at everything and discover is beautiful all right i mean look the, I, I, there's no tourists there's no crowds i could do whatever i want i could take photos i don't want nobody's gonna photobomb my thing so anyway that's fantastic okay but that's because it's europe many places in the world um okay it's not that situation so okay whatever but um getting back to the safety issue uh i don't really carry anything when i am going for a long trip more of a safety blanket. I always say to myself, okay, I, th I think I'll carry it with me just in case. But once I put that in the suitcase, it never comes out after over one year because I never had to use it. Now, I've been very fortunate so far. 
that I don't have the sphere of where I am that I would have to be walking around with some kind of a pepper spray or this military whistle which is probably useless anyway but um, okay so that's my little weapon but again the uh, I, it's you might as well not you might as well discount that because I didn't even take it out okay um what else I want to also say um, sometimes it is very good to okay another thing is this goes back to the mindset when you are alone obviously you are uh, you have to negotiate and plan and organize and do everything by yourself that being said by default you will naturally be more vigilant and more attentive to well hopefully okay uh, if not you should you should be attentive and vigilant to what is going around what is going on around you if you know what's kind of going on then that's fine you know um, I'll be honest with you I, the way I travel I am really not that uh, super concerned about theft or whatever uh, when I am in countries that are poor technically I would have local people running after me and, and, and giving me money or my or a hat or sunglasses these are this these are things that I accidentally left behind or maybe I paid for something and I didn't wait to get my change so in these kind of countries where you would think uh, they would try to scam or, or take advantage or, or keep what they you know keep what they find on the contrary so this goes back to the point that people are inherently good and and are also inherently honest because people have morals more or less they have morals okay I'm not gonna talk about the exception of the evil bad people some about the generality so again it's just about um, being comfortable okay and I think people sense people's energy all right I'm not one of those people that, that have those uh, you know super crazy backpack that you can't cut through it or I've got 15 locks or you know I've got some secret wallet that that that, 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 that I wear like a fanny pack or it's under my underwear okay dude no way Jose uh, nothing okay as a matter of fact I've had many people local that are always saying to me hey you know you may want to close your purse okay because I'm maybe too relaxed that's not good but the whole point is not to operate in fear all right I think it's very important not to operate under fear of course you know as a single woman traveling alone depending on where you are of course it could be kind of concerning and a bit anxious and makes you nervous and what have you uh, yes that can happen but I believe that people sense other people's energy whether consciously or unconscious so this goes about uh, this goes back to being safe I believe a bit of this whole law of attraction in the sense that if you are strong you are bold you are firm you know what's going on you stay your ground people will pick up that vibe and if people pick up that vibe they shouldn't mess with you okay or they ain't gonna mess with you but if you think, feel, and act like prey, you may be prey, all right? So um, I'll be honest with you, I was serving in the United States Peace Corps in Tanzania back in 2013. And uh, there were many uh, people in my group who have had things stolen, whether it's in the bus, in the hotel or as they're walking uh, a local person on a motorbike would just pass by and grab them okay these are very very unfortunate situations that can happen any in that can happen anywhere in the world not just Africa it could happen in my backyard all right but this is an example that I try to make um, again I speak from my experience I've always been pretty I don't want to say sloppy you know normal I'm not extra crazy or nervous about it knock on what nothing has happened to me well again you could say well it's just lucky okay and then I should not base on my luck on you know being too relaxed and if people are too vigilant or too careful you know they're the crazy one no on the contrary you should always be very very careful and very attentive and know what is going on the point that I want to make is the energy that one sends out okay this is a little bit of kind of a little bit of fairy tale you know corn hippy dippy whatever yeah maybe but you know what I, I believe sometimes 
there are these other invisible elements. You know, why are some people more prone or more vulnerable? Sometimes I do, and, and it has nothing got to do with size. Okay, it's not got to do with size. I really believe it is the energy, okay, that or the aura that I believe that uh, people can subconsciously pick up. So anyway, okay, sorry, <laughs> we're getting to like a spiritual uh, hootie tootie here. Okay, um, okay, take a break. Okay, I'm back. I had to stop the video because I had to uh, cross the road. So see, I am being safe. Okay, uh, and obviously, you know, the regular common sense about, you know, exercising rules and uh, paying attention where you are, uh, abiding by the local laws and rules and what have you. So these are just common sense that you should exercise anyway. It is very important that regardless of where I am, uh, to always negotiate, okay? When you're traveling for such a long time, every penny counts. I believe in fairness, okay? And I believe that after a service has been rendered, if it's in a situation where if a tip is appropriate, I always give, all right? I believe people need to make money, all right? Uh, there's a difference between uh, being completely ripped off, all right, and being a bit generous. I think if you have the liberty to travel, uh, you also can maybe afford a bit of uh, more money to some people for the local economy. Okay, so let's just kind of recap about uh, how to stay safe. Again, it's no secret, okay, there's really nothing you can do, okay, you're not going to hire a bodyguard or, you know, travel on some kind of an organized tour. You could do that, I guess definitely it would be safer, but I think your experience in traveling is going to be very limited. So if you're going to be a long-term independent traveler, I cannot stress the importance of number one, the mindset okay the mindset that the world can be safe it is a good place so if you already come from that sphere of thought uh, you're gonna be more comfortable and more relaxed okay number two thick skin can't stress the importance of not being shy you just gotta put your out your, your yourself out there and ask for what you need and do do what you got to do stick up for yourself so that's being thick skin number three is respecting the local culture it's not just in dress but everything many cultures uh, you need to abide by their customs to us it may be odd or strange but that's neither here nor there it's their custom we are visiting entering their country so we need to um, exercise that as a respect okay again this is all going to make you a better traveler you'll be more liked you'll make more friends and this is just the way to be anyway you do not impose your own culture your own belief your own whatever into a country that may not subscribe to your beliefs all right so it's so okay the whole respect thing number four um i don't know number four is Okay, and then number four is just being vigilant, being attentive to your surrounding. Don't be oblivious, an airhead, like, duh, what's going on? Do know what is going on, okay? Because nobody is going to come save your ass, really, all right? So you really need to just be responsible. And even if these are not your natural characteristics, trust me, after some traveling, uh, this will grow on you and you will develop skills of being vigilant and attentive and, and knowing how to negotiate and do all these things because by default you have no choice because nobody's going to do it for you okay okay and then uh fifth one may sound kind of hokey pokey-ish but i think it is so important because i i live this truth I believe in the whole attraction thing in the sense that you receive what you give, all right? If you are generous, you are open, you are kind and you are giving, that will come back to you. If you are not that, you will get what you are not back to you. So I believe in the whole mindset and the whole 
frequency, if you will, of being a certain way. And of course, this has to be authentic and truthful because you cannot be disingenuous, okay? You have to be the kind of person that you want to attract. And that is so key for traveling, okay? This is not some, you know, spiritual talk right now or uh, some, uh, you know, crazy belief. When you're traveling, you gotta use all your tools to make your experience as safe as possible. So, I am definitely going to rank the fact of being the kind of person that you want to meet. Alright? Because there are times when you need help, you need people to come to your assistance for whatever situation. And that being said, who is going to help somebody that they don't like? So this kind of goes back about being a likable person, okay? Now, what's likable to one person may be uh, very annoying to another, but in general, in general, people help those they like, okay? People do business with those who like, and um, when you are liked, obviously, it's more to your favor so i believe when it comes to traveling it is so super important to be in a way especially you have to be genuine okay to be in a way that people are more inclined to want to come to your assistance okay and then there of course is the more you know easy things that one does for example um no, no i travel with a smartphone it's an iphone and that's all i have i really don't travel with a laptop or with a different camera i used to do that but i realized that those things don't last that long because i can be from one extreme weather to another so um, my cameras never last that long. So basically, I keep everything very simple and very minimal. So I just have an iPhone and call it a day. So with that, I take photos of credit card, uh, passport, any, any important document that I would need that if I lost, I have that on my phone. Hey, I am now in Porto, Portugal. And check this beautiful puppy out. Okay, so I want to conclude about uh, safety for a female independent traveler. Um, again, keep everything very simple. You don't need to take a lot of things with you, all right? Uh, one has a tendency to forget that many things can be replenished or bought wherever it is that you are traveling. Um, I always pretty much travel with a half empty suitcase because I'm thinking maybe I will acquire some things abroad so then the empty or the half empty suitcase allows me to bring stuff back. So there's that. Number two, I like to, depending on where I'm going in the world, um, wear just really kind of a casual, kind of a clothes that you really don't want because after that traveling is done, I basically give my clothes away. I, I, I just leave it for the locals, cleaning lady, wherever. I, again, I, I travel to really rough places, so uh, it's very appreciative, my things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this vlogging thing, it's a bit weird. Okay, but hey, you know what, let's segue a little bit. Let's check, let's check out this, let's check out this. I mean, how cool is this? Lovely. Super fantastic. Okay, so I am now just going to uh, stay put and not uh, talk and walk at the same time. Okay, so let's talk about again um, the way I pack. Basically, the way I pack is very simple. Take as, take as little things as possible, all right? 
because one has a tendency to forget that things can be replenished and repurchased abroad. Obviously, the things that you take with you are your medication and your favorite this and that. Uh, but at the end of the day, pretty much, again, depending on where you're going, things can be acquired abroad. So sometimes uh, it's actually even cheaper abroad. So that's something you may want to consider. Okay, so aside from um, just bringing very little things, uh, when you're traveling, it's really about being mindful of where you are to soak up the experience to the max. So in this kind of situation, uh, Ego and status should really be parked aside or it should not even be a consideration. So best to leave all your fancy schmancy stuff back at home. This is not the time to really showcase your wealth or your clout or whatever you want to call it. As a matter of fact, I would, depending on again where I'm going, honestly, you want to be clean and respectful, but yeah. You know, sometimes it would behoove you to look, um, okay, I want to use the word shabby, but um, discreet, okay? Discreet. Because a lot of places in the world, these, well, life is that people judge you from the outside. You could be, not have two dimes to your name, but if you look like you have a lot of money, you'll have a lot of people coming towards you wanting something. And if you are realistically loaded, but on the outside, you don't look much, it's a little bit easier when you travel. I think you just want to be discreet, you know, dump the whole ego, okay, leave all your, you know, Chanel bags and your uh, Rolex watch and all your fancy stuff abroad. I mean, uh, at home. When you're going to a place like Europe, which is where I, right where I am right now, yes, I think there's more of a liberty. You can look a little bit more clean up and, and, and schnazzier. Uh, I'm right now currently with my family, so I don't want to embarrass them, so I kind of uh, got a bit clean up for them. But if I was alone traveling somewhere else, uh, even if it's uh, in Europe or, or somewhere that is a bit uh, rougher because I like rough, I like adventure, I always just dress super low profile, okay? Couple shirts, couple pants, couple whatever. I wash everything uh, by hand. Or if I am in a place where there's some kind of a laundry mat or some kind of or somebody somebody that can wash things for you, I'll give it to them. And many of the places, the clothing are charged by the kilo. Okay, so that's kind of that. But anyway, just just try to not have anything expensive or valuable with you. Uh, I talked about uh, you know not carrying any camera. Yeah, just one smartphone, which is my everything, and. Uh, for the purpose of what I need, it's more than sufficient. Uh, I said to you that uh, there were many, the, the, I, I said that, uh, you know, in the past cameras did not last. Yeah, because um, I would be in the Sahara Desert, and next thing I know, I am in Iceland where it's snowing. So that very harsh climate, the wear and tear, the constant in and out, on off, it, it, it wears out on these cameras. And when I talk about the camera, we're talking about more of a, a compact digital, not the full on DSLR thing. I have one of those, but oh my God, that's just honker, they're heavy. Again, um, I'm not really doing anything that I would require such a, um, you know, expensive, valuable, heavy setup. So, uh, that being said, again, keep everything very, very simple and low profile. I think the simpler you are, the, le the, the more discreet, the less ostentatious you are and you look, better. Okay, um, what do I carry? Okay, I'm not a backpacker, so when I travel, I do not have a backpack. Uh, and I'm not even talking about just like a backpack or backpack, but even like a little day pack. Uh, I don't know, to me that kind of shout, tourist, traveler, come get me. Not fair. Of course, they're very convenient and, and <laughs> the majority of the people have that, but I just have a very small uh, a, a crossbody bag. It's just enough to fit what I need, all right? And again, I don't, I don't believe in get, needing to. Hi. <laughs> oh my God, the smogging in public is something to get used to. Again, we talked about being thick-skinned. So yeah, I'm right in the midst of the most uh, popular point in Porto. Okay, I've got these bridges. Uh, you can imagine all the people are kind of uh, passing me and giving me waves and giving me a look. But hey, you know what? We're being thick-skinned, so I gotta get over. Uh, I gotta I have to get used to talking in public. Okay, so um, let's conclude, all right? I have a tendency to ramble. Sorry about that. I hope you enjoyed my video so far. Uh, comment, comment if you have any questions or what you like to know. 
um, subscribe if you want more, you know, silly stuff like this. And, uh, and uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Like. That, that would be so nice of you. Anyway, again, the majority of being safe is just pure common sense, okay? I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't it, it's just common sense. But believe it or not, a lot of people do not have common sense. So if you can, you know, muster a bit of a common sense, that would be fantastic. Um, the rest, again, I, I think so importantly is mindset, okay? Uh, be the kind of person you want to meet when you are out, out. And this is not just for traveling, this is just life in general, but more so when you're traveling because you're kind of by yourself, okay? Assuming that you are not with anybody else. And um, the rest of these, uh, you know, how to pack and what to bring and what to do, maybe I'll, in the future I'll make a video of that, but for the time being, this video is just purely my experience. I'm sure many people will disagree and that's totally cool. I, you know, I, I believe in life, it's it's better to to have lovers and haters than, nah, indifference. Indifference being, you don't give a rip or, uh, yeah, it's really not, uh, it's really not making a dent in you in either way. So, people may disagree with me, people may agree with me, but again, I speak purely from experience and I don't mean to uh, allow my aloofness for the whole security thing to be um, something that I think everybody should exercise on the contrary but if I am suggesting that if I've been safe thus far <laughs> it is because I believe in how one carries oneself again the energy you know being a certain way these are all very very important tools in your traveling toolbox that I think people don't think about Okay, so anyway, I hope you have enjoyed that, and um, subscribe, comment, and like, and I will see you somewhere in the world. Meanwhile, travel the world, it is the best thing in the world, and in the future I'll make a video about um, how to travel long term, okay? But for the time being, stay safe and always stay raw. Bye-bye.